So what impresses you most with the Center for Fiction? You know, what were the reasons that you thought this would be a really good fit for yourself or that you wanted to be a part of this organization and lead it? Yes. Well, I've been in the nonprofit sector for over 25 years. And so I have a lot of experience with running and uh, nonprofit organizations and navigating organizations through turbulent times and wonderful times. So I had a lot of experience that I thought would be beneficial to the Center for Fiction. Um, but I felt like it was a great alignment with my background, with my experience in the arts and education. And in particular, um, at this time, many of us are thinking about sort of what work can we do that's most impactful and that can change the lives of people. And for me, it's the words and the storytelling that resonate with so much of us. We were all home during the pandemic. Many people were watching the news or they were listening to podcasts or they were reading books, um, but they were listening to stories and they were trying to find the relevance in the story to their lives. And for me, this was a place that um, I could help with uh, impacting people's lives um, in a positive way and helping to inform and uh, share information um, and to keep the art of fiction flowing. Now let's talk also about some challenges. When I think of arts leaders, there's always this question around fundraising. You know, oh yeah, that doesn't go away. Do we, <laughs> right? How you know? How do we? How do we create uh, opportunities for fund for funders, so to speak? How do we think around funders? How do we create those ideas that we feel will attract uh, the funding community? So, so what are your challenges there? What's your thinking there? And I hope I phrase that correctly. <laughs> Yeah, well, we have to re we have to reinvite people back into our lives. That's what the mm. arts community has to mm -hmm. do. We have to remind people that the thing that sparks joy, one of the things that sparks joy for all of us is our connection to the arts, whether it's visual, whether it's spoken word, whether it's music, and there those are all the touch points that matter. And so um, I feel like the funding community is finding, finally really seeing the relevance of the arts in the lives of everyone because the arts sector was, it was almost decimated by COVID. Mm -hmm. It was, it was just, it was painful to watch. And so as we reopen, um, it's reminding people just how important the arts are for all of us and how literature is so important for all of us and how storytelling is so important for all of us. So making the case for why an investment in the arts and literature is a key part of um, bolstering our communities, you know, and our society at large. It's what brings joy to everyone and it's critical and funders need to support that. And we're all trying to keep up and keep things current mm. and, and mm. resonant with uh, our environment, what's going on. How mm. do you uh, plan to keep the center um, relevant, exciting, and just in line with what's going on? Um, we uh, invite people into the, the writers that we work with are really the ones who are our connection to the community, our emerging writers, fellows. They're writing about sort of what's relevant in our times, things that are happening in our lives. And so they are in some ways sort of our touch points, our connectors to what's happening around us. And so the work that they, that we um, help to support um, through their writing is to me what really is the most important thing about the work that we do. Um, and it's really our connection to um, the relevant causes and topics that we're hearing about. Um, and that's the way that we stay connected. Of course, our public events are also an opportunity for us to connect with the community, to hear what people are thinking about in terms of what we're offering and um, the books that we're presenting, the discussions that um, are emerging. Um, our goal is to stay uh, kind of ahead of what we're hearing in the wider community and present programming that speaks to what people are hearing about in their lives. And so that's what's important for us. And that's how we stay connected. I had a point before, which was agreeing, of course, with what Tracy's <laughs> saying about how essential the arts and all their forms are, because I think funders and everyone else, what did people turn to during the pandemic, especially during the lockdown, for those people that were locked down, they watched movies, they they read books, they wrote poetry, they fashioned a garden. But all of those things are because they had exposure to some art form or another. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that you know, not just funders, but everyone needs to recognize the value of arts, arts education in any form. 
you know, whether it's a dance routine on TikTok or, you know, an <laughs> opera. Um, and then I guess segueing right into that would be that I think of, you know, the sparking joy movement. And I think everyone needed to find joy every day during the pandemic and everyone should find joy every day anyway. But I would say that we live in a world that's very fast, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's a 30 second, 10 second TikTok video or a snippet, everyone talks to you about how your teenagers have an attention span of X seconds because what they are exposed to is no longer, you know, a thousand page novel or book, it is snippets. And I just find it interesting that a center for fiction or even a library, you know, where you go and you want to get lost in a book or you mm -hmm. want to get lost in a play or an opera or whatever the art mm -hmm. form is. And it must be an interesting challenge as you talk about staying relevant. And there are many ways to read a book. And, you know, we, I used to have an argument all the time as someone who hires young people coming out of university or not university, especially now that I work in an affordable housing center for the arts, um, trying not to have that bias of a four-year college degree mm -hmm. being what you need necessarily or an advanced degree. Um, and thinking one way about nobody can write anymore. You know, I still need people that can write. And what do they teach these kids anyway, you know, and having professors or educators say to me, well, you're reading with a different perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, they are writing, they're just writing in a language you don't read, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to stay with the times and thinking about your perspective on how it must be, how has fiction changed? And how has writing changed? And how, what is the center doing to recognize perhaps the change in how fiction is um, both written and or disseminated in a changing world that is faster in some ways and also still a refuge when you want to slow down? Yeah, well, mm -hmm. the, the, that's a great point. And it's something that we are talking about today, yesterday, we'll be talking about tomorrow, which is how to stay relevant, how to create um, programming and material that people want to be connected to. Um, there are still people who want to hold a book. You know, they want to mm -hmm. check out a book. They want to carry a book. There are people who want to <laughs> download a book. Um, there are people who don't want to read a whole book. They only want to read a short story. And so we want to appeal to different audiences. There are also people who want to look at the intersection between literature and dance or literature and music or literature and um, the visual arts. And so we want to create kind of an interdisciplinary approach to storytelling so that we are able to uh, deliver the story in whatever way that people can receive it and that it resonates with them. So our goal is to just stay current um, and be responsive to the changing mm -hmm. nature of the, right. the environment. We, you know, we have so it's to, almost platform agnostic. A little mm -hmm. bit, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We, um, but, I, but again, you know, there are people who checked out books during the pandemic and we were, we had like a hybrid opening where we had some staff in the building, but the building was closed and people wanted the books and we would, you know, check out the book and put it on a cart and they'd come pick it up on the curb and they'd take it home and then they'd bring it back. We'd wipe it down. We'd put it back on the shelf. I mean, so, um, and the publishing industry did really well during COVID. People were ordering books left and right to have delivered to their home. So I, I don't think the book is gone, <laughs> but I do think um, as younger no, audiences I didn't mean come that. about, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think as younger audience, audiences come about and they want to access information in a different way, we have to figure out what that is and um, make sure that we are um, addressing that. So, um, and Toby, I think you had a point you wanted to make as well. Well, I'm of the generation that wants to hold the book in right. my <laughs> hands. I want to touch it. Yeah. And um, I want to give a shout out to those of you who have never been to, to the Center for Fiction's Thank you. <laughs> bookstore. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books on the shelves to look at, to touch, to feel. And it's, it's absolutely stunning. Yes. So thank you so much for providing that. Thank you. Thank for you. all of us. Thank you. And I would also say, you know, I'm one of those people that is learning to listen to books, 
Yeah. You know, Audio book. I, and, and it's really interesting because I still feel that I haven't really gotten it unless I read it. I mean, yeah. it's this strange thing that goes on. But so when I'm when I'm listening to the audiobooks, I find myself writing notes so I can remember. I feel I retain better because something about holding the book makes me feel that I own it. it that I own it. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, is there? It's a anything, wonderful thing. <laughs> Is it's there anything else you, you want to say about the Center for Fiction before we, we wrap? We want everyone to come and visit the Center for Fiction at 15 Lafayette Avenue. Our website is centerforfiction.org. Come visit our bookstore. Come visit our cafe. Come access our, virtu- our in-person programming or our virtual programming. Become a member of the Center for Fiction. Apply for a writing fellowship. What does it mean to be a member? If you um, sign up for an annual membership, you will have access to our members lounge. You'll be able to spend the day in the building, um, lounge in various rooms, read books, take magazines, be on your laptop, host guests if you need a space to meet. Um, And if you want to join our writer studio because you're working on that next great novel, you can become a member of the writer studio, have a dedicated desk just for you where you can come from sunup to sundown in a quiet space and just work on work on your novel. And so we have something for everyone and we hope people will visit us and find out more about what we do. <laughs> well, I hope our viewers really uh, understand from this conversation how important and lovely and engaging the Center for Fiction is. And with you at the helm, thank I you. am just <laughs> sure that we've got so many great things coming. So thank you so much, Thank Tracy. you so much. <laughs> So we will see all of you next time on Brooklyn Savvy.